Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, this one's part 51. Currently this series is featuring how to build a model steam engine. This is making the wooden mounting plinth and it's just one way of doing it. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. This is building a Stuart Victoria and in this episode I'm going to show how I make the wooden base that the entire engine is mounted on. In this image you can see that I've left in the background a Stuart Victoria just to show viewers what I'm actually making and to remind me what I'm building. In this clip I'm measuring the length of the main mounting block so that I can transfer that measurement to the piece of wood that I have, which is a bit long. There are many ways to make a mounting for the Stuart Victoria. I could make one out of fabricated metal sheet. And on a previous model that I built many years ago, I used a solid block of mahogany. But when I finished the engine, I was never happy with the way the mahogany block looked. This is a clip showing the first Stuart Victoria that I ever built. This was quite a lot of years ago, and it's a clip from an old VHS video. Even though I elevated the mahogany block, it still didn't look good. For the moment, I'm going to press ahead and make the block using a piece of softwood. This is a very old piece of softwood. It's actually imperial, not metric, so it measures two inches, not the metric equivalent. By taking some measurements from the Victoria that's complete in the background, I now need to cut this to the same size. It's over now to my bandsaw to cut the piece of wood to the correct length. And to shorten the duration of this clip, the video is running at a high speed. And in no time at all, the job was complete. This clip shows the progress so far. Before I cut the piece of wood, I rounded the edges. For some reason, my old bandsaw cut this wood perfectly square, as can be seen when I use a set square. You can see that I've rounded the ends of the piece of wood as well. So what to do with it now? Should I cover it in these things? These are terracotta floor tiles. If I was building a doll's house, then maybe I would use these things, but it's all down to a matter of taste. And whatever I do with them, they look horrendous. I suppose I could buy a sheet of terracotta bricks for the sides, but it's always difficult to know what to do with the corners. I'm sorry, but on the grounds of good taste, I'm not going to do this. Instead, I'm going to coat the top, which is quite rough. Steam engines drop quite a lot of water and oil on their baseboards. I normally stick planks to baseboards using cyanoacrylate adhesive, and for some reason lately, a lot of experts are telling me that cyanoacrylate adhesive is not waterproof. Personally, I've never found this to be so, and here they are in the position they're going to be when I stick them all to the piece of board. Currently, they are sat on a piece of plywood that I used as a painting board for the block of wood. And that is all this piece of plywood is good for because it's very badly warped. That's why I'm going to try the MDF method. The piece of MDF that I have is exactly the same size as this plywood, and the planks fit on it perfectly. I'll need some wider pieces of planking for the edge. This is what I'm going to use to stick the planking to the piece of MDF. It's medium viscosity superglue also known as cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue. This clip shows that I used a 15mm thick piece of plywood to paint on. What I'm doing at the moment is using my small Proxon blowtorch to dry the paint, because I need to continue with the next stage of the operation, which is to smooth and fully waterproof the top of it. I'm not going to do much with the underside apart from stick it to the base. I use my belt sand to smooth it out, and here I'm demonstrating just how warped the piece of plywood is. It's unsuitable for the job. The block of wood is good though, 
In this clip I'm rubbing it down with some emery cloth. And now I'm going to coat the entire top of this piece of wood using JB Weld. This is really good stuff to use. It's a two part epoxy resin mix. And this one is the marine version. I'm going to mix it on the wood itself. It seems pointless mixing it on a separate piece of wood. Provided I mix it thoroughly, I shouldn't have a problem. This next clip shows me mixing the resin at an incredibly high speed. The video is running at 800%. I continued the mixing process until the epoxy resin was an even colour throughout. Then I spread it on top of the piece of wood. This JB Weld is the 24 hour version and when it sets it should level up a bit more. What I'm doing here is using a small amount of water on my spreading stick to get a nice smooth finish. Once this JB Weld has set, I'm going to thoroughly flatten it off. For that, I will use my belt sander, but as you can see, with the application of the water to stop the stick from dragging, it's already quite flat and smooth. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.